Deep in the Guatemalan jungle, towering temples rise above the canopy, stone giants of an ancient empire. Tikal is one of the most iconic Maya cities, a place where kings once ruled, astronomers watched the stars, and scribes carved glyphs into limestone. But what if the earliest people to build here weren't Maya at all? What if the foundations of Tikal were laid by outsiders, people whose genes and culture have only now come to light? Before we start, I'm on a road to get 1,000 subscribers as a small channel. If you want to help me, please subscribe. Tikal sits in the heart of the Petén Basin, a dense tropical rainforest region in northern Guatemala. The site is surrounded by seasonal swamps, broadleaf jungle and limestone ridges that provided both shelter and building material. Traditional archaeology holds that Tikal was founded by early Maya settlers around 1000 BCE during the Middle Preclassic period. Over time, the city expanded from a small ceremonial center into a sprawling metropolis with hundreds of structures, pyramids, palaces, reservoirs and causeways. By the late Classic era, it was home to tens of thousands and rivaled other great Maya cities like Calakmul and Caracol. This narrative of a slow organic rise by indigenous Maya groups has long dominated history books. Scholars pointed to architectural continuity, the development of writing systems, and the presence of Maya cultural elements even in the earliest known layers. But new genetic research is challenging this view, suggesting that Tikal's first builders may have come from somewhere else entirely. As archaeologists dug deeper into Tikal's oldest layers, they began to notice something odd. Burials from the early pre-classic period contained skulls with cranial modifications that didn't match typical Maya patterns. Pottery shards revealed styles and motifs that seemed more at home in the Gulf Coast or Highland regions. Tools made of obsidian and jade hinted at distant trade networks, and some architectural foundations lacked the symmetry and alignment found in later Maya structures. These anomalies led some researchers to question whether the early inhabitants of Tikal were truly Maya at all, or if they were migrants from another part of Mesoamerica, bringing with them their own traditions and technologies. Despite these clues, the dominant theory held firm that these features represented early experimentation within a Maya context. But as technology advanced, scientists turned to ancient DNA for answers, hoping that the genetic record could illuminate the true origins of Tikal's first residents. In an ambitious effort to unravel Tikal's deep past, a team of geneticists and archaeologists partnered to extract ancient DNA from human remains buried in pre-classic layers of the city, dating from roughly 1200 to 400 BCE. The samples came primarily from teeth and petrous bones, dense parts of the skeleton known to preserve genetic material even in humid tropical conditions. Using hybridization capture techniques, the researchers targeted over a million single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, across the genome, along with full mitochondrial DNA sequences. These were then compared to reference genomes from across ancient Mesoamerica, including the Maya lowlands, the Gulf Coast, and even the central Mexican plateau. To avoid contamination, sampling took place in clean lab facilities with strict controls, and radiocarbon dating confirmed that these individuals predated the classic Maya rise. The goal was simple but bold, to determine whether the first people of Tikal truly descended from ancestral Maya or from a different population entirely. When the DNA analysis was complete, the results were unexpected. Several individuals from the deepest pre-classic burials showed genetic profiles that differed sharply from later Maya remains. Instead of clustering with lowland Maya genomes, their ancestry leaned more toward populations from the Gulf Coast and the southern Veracruz region, areas historically associated with the Olmec civilization. This genetic signal was distinct from anything previously found in Petén. These early Tykal inhabitants carried mitochondrial and nuclear markers more common in Western Mesoamerica, suggesting a migration or dispersal event that brought a non-Maya group into the region. Over time, these individuals appear to have been replaced or absorbed by later Maya populations, whose DNA began to dominate in burials dating to 400 BCE and beyond. This finding challenges the idea that Tikal's development was entirely homegrown. Instead, it paints a picture of cultural layering and population replacement, with the earliest founders of Tikal possibly belonging to a forgotten people. 
The genetic distinction between Tikal's earliest inhabitants and its later Maya rulers has led researchers to propose a two-phase model of the city's founding. In this scenario, a group with Gulf Coast or Olmec-related ancestry established the first settlements around 1200 BCE, bringing with them new cultural practices, trade connections, and possibly early forms of civic architecture. These early settlers may have been drawn to the Petan Basin for its water sources, fertile soils, and strategic location. Then, several centuries later, Maya groups from the Guatemalan highlands or other parts of the lowlands began to arrive, gradually intermingling with or supplanting the earlier population. This cultural fusion or replacement may explain why some early Tikal artifacts bear non-Maya features, while later ones align with classic Maya norms. Rather than a simple linear development, Tikal's rise appears to have been shaped by waves of migration, adaptation and transformation, rewriting our assumptions about the city's earliest roots. The genetic data aligns with other lines of evidence pointing to distinct cultural practices among Tikal's earliest inhabitants. Burial positions, cranial shaping styles and grave offerings differ between pre-classic and classic layers, suggesting shifts in identity and belief systems over time. In the earliest phases, some skulls show cranial modifications more typical of Gulf Coast groups, not the flattened or elongated styles seen in classic Maya elites. Additionally, isotope analysis from dental enamel hints at differing childhood diets and origins, implying that early individuals weren't born in the Petan lowlands. These boundaries gradually blurred, but they reflect a complex human story beneath the temples. Mitochondrial DNA, which traces maternal ancestry, revealed early Tikal individuals carried haplogroups such as D4H3A and X2A, Lineages rarely found in classic Maya remains, but more frequent in Gulf Coast and Western Mesoamerican populations. Meanwhile, Y-chromosome analysis reflecting paternal lineage uncovered markers consistent with haplogroup Q1A2A101, a variant common among Olmec-associated male lines. These early genetic signatures faded in later periods, replaced by the more typical Maya haplogroups like QM3 and mtDNA haplogroups A2 and B2. The genetic turnover supports a scenario of population replacement or absorption over time, further reinforcing the idea that Tikal's earliest builders were not Maya in the genetic sense. The ancient DNA findings force us to rethink the very foundation of one of the most celebrated Maya cities. Rather than emerging solely from indigenous Maya innovation, Tikal may have first taken shape through the efforts of outsiders. Groups connected genetically and culturally to the Olmec world or other Gulf Coast populations. These founders introduced new practices, technologies, and perhaps cosmological ideas that influenced what came after. Over time, waves of Maya migrants entered the region, interweaving with or displacing the earlier inhabitants and gradually giving rise to the classic Maya civilization we recognize today. This dynamic origin story echoes a broader truth about ancient Mesoamerica. Cities weren't built in isolation, but through layers of migration, cultural fusion and transformation. Tikal's stone pyramids and glyphs may be Maya, but the soil beneath them remembers an earlier people. One that shaped the city's birth and then quietly vanished, their legacy written not in stone but in DNA. The revelations from ancient DNA open new pathways for understanding Tikal and the broader Maya world. Future research aims to extract DNA from other pre-classic sites like Uaxactun, Nakbi and El Mirador to see if similar non-Maya ancestry appears elsewhere. Isotope analysis could clarify migration routes and diets, while new excavations may uncover transitional layers linking early outsiders to later Maya elites. Could glyphs, ceramics or architecture hold overlooked signs of this cultural mixing? And what became of the original inhabitants? Were they absorbed or displaced? Each new burial, each strand of DNA, holds clues to questions we've only just begun to ask. Tikal has long stood as a symbol of Maya achievement, but now, ancient DNA suggests that its earliest chapter was written by people from somewhere else. These forgotten founders, whose bones lay deep beneath the temples, reveal that even the greatest cities rise from a web of migrations and mingling cultures. What other secrets lie beneath the plazas and pyramids of Mesoamerica? Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you believe other Maya cities have hidden origins too? And if you enjoyed this dive into ancient genetics and lost civilizations, please like, subscribe.